And welcome to the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. We speak to you about your life, your money, and your investments. And as always, we're coming to you from the spiritual and soon-to-be financial capital of the world, Jerusalem, Israel. If you like what you see on this video or any other video, be sure to hit the like button. And of course, if you have not yet done it, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have a fascinating, fascinating show today. It's my pleasure to present Neil Sheila Godfrey, who is an American author. Her books deal with money, life skills, and value issues. One of them, Money Doesn't Grow on Trees, A Parent's Guide to Raising Financially Responsible Children, was a New York Times number one bestseller. She is chairman and CEO of the Children's Financial Network and an executive in residence at Columbia Business School. Neil, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you, Aaron. It is great to be here. I appreciate that. So let's jump right in. Okay. The big issue, I think, today is it manifests itself when we go to the pump and we fill up our cars with gasoline. But it's a lot more than that. We go to the grocery store and all of a sudden the bill at the end is, you know, 5, 10, 15% more than it was six to nine months ago. I'd like to speak about inflation and ask you about inflation. Sort of give us a, a, a rundown of what's going on, why it's running down, and why it's bad for us. Well, the fact of the matter is that everybody likes to do recreational complaining. And the fact of the matter is, you know, a year ago, two years ago, we complained about the fact that we weren't working and everything was closed. And we had zero inflation, essentially. And now people are back to work. If you want a job, you can get a job. And if you want to work, you can work. And what that means is if you want to go buy something, you can go buy it. And that means that we are going to have inflation. Gas prices are going up, et cetera. I'm not going to talk about Ukraine because that's a separate issue, too, that is going to force inflation. But just when we have full employment, you have inflation. That's a fact of life. And by the way, people were still complaining and they were getting the checks that the government was doing in terms of subsidies. Also pumping, pumping money into the economy to keep us going. We're back, full, infl you know, full employment and inflation. Now, you can be smart about inflation or you can keep letting it get you. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, let's be smart about it. So take a look, look at your budget, break it down. Food, food prices are up. How can you cook more smartly? What does that mean? It means that your body only knows protein. It doesn't know if it's a chicken leg or a chicken breast. It doesn't know that. So what you can do is you can make meals that you can be clever and make sure if you make a meal, freeze a meal, get the kids involved have a challenge once a week. Somebody's going to make a meal. It's going to be clever. And this is what it's going to cost. And make sure, again, you buy, you freeze, you cook together, you make it a challenge. You can make it fun. You don't have to make it so that it's horrible. Let's say go out once a week. Is it important? more important to get together with friends or is it more important to go out to the restaurant? You decide. If it's more important to really get together with friends, do a potluck. Everybody cooks something, brings it over. It doesn't cost a lot. You get together, you laugh, you have fun. So what I'm saying is just make sure you're smart about it. Don't make 80 trips to the grocery. You don't have to. You can figure out, get the kids to, to do one sweep. So I'm going to go to the supermarket. I'm going to drop the kids off. I'm going to get see friends. I'm be strategic about it. And you know what? You'll actually save money. Wow. That's cool. So the first thing you would recommend, obviously, for those who haven't, but even those who have, is to budget, right? It all starts from the budget. And then be smart within the budget, substitute certain things for other things. But it all has to fit, right? Exactly. And and I, I think the first thing is stop kvetching because that's that's the first thing. It's a mindset. It is an absolute mindset because we physiologically react to stress and you're creating it for yourself. So number one, everything you're buying, I want you to look at it and say, 
do I need you or do I want you? Mm -hmm. And that's when you have to actually make that decision. Write out the list before you walk into the store. I know it sounds goofy, but don't go into a supermarket when you're hungry because you're hungry. Don't. And make sure that discretionary spending is something that you really think about. And set your long-term goals. Is that spending today going to get your kids to college tomorrow? I'm not going to choose what's important to you. You do this professionally, Aaron. You know, if you want to save for retirement, if you want it to look in a certain way, if you want to get to the kids to college, if you want to have a vacation, if you want to buy that house, does that spending today get you closer to that? You tell me, you decide. What you're basically saying is you have to, you, you want to examine uh, all of your money decisions and see, right? Is it a, you know, is yeah. it something that'll fulfill my instant gratification or if it's something that'll, that'll contribute to my long-term welfare? Totally. And, and what I do is I take people, you know, I say to people, actually take a picture of it, keep it on your phone, have that your screensaver. Is that buying whatever that, you know, expensive pocketbook or going out to dinner? Is it going to get me closer to the retirement that I want to design and stop pushing it off? Look at your parents. It does happen. And not only are you going to get older, here's the deal. You're going to live longer. Do you want to be dependent upon somebody else in that? Or do you want the freedom to design? And when people think that I'm not going to be a slave to my budget, it's exactly the opposite. Because if you don't make the money decisions and you're not empowered to make those and make your own monetary decisions in your life, someone else is going to have to step in and make those. It could be family. It could be your kids. It could be the government. Someone else will be telling you how you're going to live. That is enslavement as far as I'm concerned. So well, I think what I can, what you can take from what you're saying is while things might be a little tougher now in an inflationary area in an inflationary time period, what you're saying applies even if there's no inflation, right? You always have to be smart about the financial decisions you make. <laughs> exactly. This is the way we should live our life. You make a decision. Do right. I want this? Do I want that? So we were talking before we, we went on, and I was sharing with you that I had seen earlier today a video, um, a TikTok video, which had garnered hundreds of thousands of hits from some guy who was preaching the fact that budgets are bad because they're bad for your self-esteem because it's very hard to hit your budgets. And it's like a diet that if you, if you crave the cookie so much, at some point you're gonna give in and eat the cookie. And he said, forget it. Don't bother with a budget because it's not helpful. What would you, what would, I had a hunch I know, but what would you say to that? Well, first of all, when you told me, Aaron, my head blew off because it would, it's exactly the opposite. It's like saying, I don't like to exercise. I don't like to go to the gym. I don't like to sweat. I don't want to, you know, wear latex clothing and, and, you know, be shamed in front of all the other, you know, size twos who are there in latex clothing. You know, this is not my idea of a good time, but I want a healthy body. So you decide, do you want a healthy financial life? And it is like a diet. Of course, you're going to cheat and fall off it and then go back on it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's saying that this has to be an object of torture. This is not root canal without any anesthesia. This is you designing what you want. And here's a roadmap and professionals like you to help you get there. So you decide. I don't care if you don't want to do it, but it's just like saying to somebody, I don't want to diet. Well, you might get type 2 diabetes. That's your choice then. And you have to make that decision. I'm not going to make it for you. But if it's more important to eat the sugar and it's more important to spend your money, go ahead. But it will run out. So um, what I'd like to talk about next is leaning in. Um, you know, you've written a number one bestseller about... Um, raising children in a financially responsible way. And that also leads into what I would say for sure is financial illiteracy um, amongst the younger elements of the population. You know, they're bombarded nonstop 
with advertisements, why you need to spend money, how you're going to have um, a hat. You're, you're going to be amazingly happy if you spend money. Um, you should take on more debt payments, all these different things. Um, and they're not getting bombarded by smart financial uh, principles. Can you speak about sort of financial illiteracy and what we need to do to correct it? Well, it is an epidemic, but the fact of the matter is it always has been. And one way or another, we've always been bombarded by advertising. Um, when I you know when I was a kid and, you know, television was coming in and our parents were like, oh, whoa, that cereal company is convincing you to, to buy. My thing is educate the kids about it. I would take kids into a store and say, remember, you were watching the cartoons and that cereal ad came in. Well, let's go into the supermarket. Where is your cereal? Well, it's three feet above the floor. It's because that's your eye level and the advertiser wants you to see it. It's not any different with our telephones. The advertisers want the kids to be seeing it. So it goes back to choice. We are always going to have temptations. And there are people always that are going to sell unhealthy things and drugs and all that stuff. And we need to empower those kids again. Design what you want. Pick a goal to save for. You want the iPhone? That's cool. How are you going to earn that money to get that iPhone? And I teach the parents to teach their kids how to earn, save, spend, and share, because that's what money is about. And when, by the way, they're raised with it, it just becomes part of who they are. They understand. And it's just the way we teach life skills to our kids. We teach them to stop at a red light. So they know always stop at the red light. It's the same thing. What money you're earning, you're going to have to pay taxes and let's budget it for the things that you want. And by the way, I build charity into that because it's very important to teach those kids that yes, they are lucky that they are able to do this and there are people who are less fortunate or causes or animals or the environment and they need to be involved in that. And that part is not only giving money, but also giving of yourself. And, you know, the Torah has said 10%, and that's been passed on to the New Testament and to actually all religions. The 10% is the number that you do give. That's great. And it's always easier to, I would say, ingrain in children good habits than to try and change bad habits when somebody's 35 or 40 years old. It's just much exactly more difficult. Right. You're exactly right, Aaron. It's just, that's how you grow up. You know that you eat with a fork, you know, and a knife and a spoon. You don't eat with your face. That's a habit. And they can learn that at a young age. And that just gets to be part of their life. So what are the, can you give us like three tips that you would tell parents um, to, give to teach their children um, in order to be not just financially literate, but, but financially successful and responsible, I guess is the right word. Sure. Number one, don't make money the biggest secret in the family. Hmm. Um, what our kids do hear us fight about money. 80% of all divorces are due to money issues. And we do, you know, don't tell the kids. Well, the fact of the matter is the kids know that there's a problem within the family. We are born with a financial personality. We're basically savers or spenders. We come to money in a certain way. Talk to the kids about money. Show them bills. I am an entrepreneur. I've always told the kids that in essence, I, you know, what I earn. I don't have a problem with that. There's no shame. I don't, I don't value myself based upon what I earn. I value myself based upon what I do and what I give. So I get them involved. Here's the electric bill. Go look at it. Figure out ways you can save money on that. So that's number one. Talk about it. Get them involved. Here's the budget. We can go on vacation if we do this. Come out, guys, of some ways you can save money to contribute to that. So I get them involved. That's number one. Number two, um, I don't want them to confuse net worth with self-worth. So it is very important to empower them to understand what money does 
and what it doesn't do. Just because you have those cool sneakers does not make you a cool person. So you have to start having those conversations. Um, and, you know, because we can think of bad guys who have lots of money that we revere. Yeah. And those are the types of conversations I want them to have. The other thing is I want them to actually be on an allowance, meaning oh, okay. teaching them the way you get money is you earn it. That becomes a habit within the family. You can want whatever you want. Let's work out how you can do chores to earn that money. And then you budget that money. Part goes again to charity. And then you divide it into what I call quick cash, which is instant gratification. You worked hard, you get to spend some money and making buying choice. Mm -hmm. So you're teaching the kids to also spend. And then part of it, they push off to medium term savings, pick a longer goal so that they can save for that. And part goes into what I call long term savings. And frankly, it goes into a bank and then it goes into an investment. And you don't touch it. Now, do three-year-olds or 10-year-olds understand the concept of long-term savings? No. Do the adults in America understand the concept of long-term savings? No. So you might as well teach them the habit when they're young because they don't get it. Huh. That's... And that's what I do. So if you said three things, that's what I would say. That's great. What I've heard other people do, and I think this is also a great idea, is like we're going on vacation. And this is what we have, right? This is the amount of money that we have. And, you know, you guys pick the activities, you pick whatever it is that we're going to do, but it's got to fit. It all has to fit into that budget. And that also gives them, like, right? Gives them, I, I, that's exactly what you're saying, right? Give them, empower the children to start making intelligent uh, decisions. And then they obviously understand uh, going forward you know, the consequences uh, of their decisions. Absolutely. And, and what I do is take it a step further in terms of challenging them. Hmm. Start talking a year in advance and say, we can do this. If you guys want to work and earn some money to contribute to that, there are other things we can do. You guys go online and research. You figure out what we can do. You figure out if we drive this is what we can do. If we fly, this is what it's going to cost. These are the hotels. Hey, they include breakfast. We can get um, a room that has a kitchen in it. So, okay, we decide to go out for one meal and two we cook in. Whatever that is, mm -hmm. really challenge them. And you know the life skills you're teaching them then, Aaron. Mm -hmm. That's a really big thing. So it's not only the budget, it's you go figure it out. That's great. I want to go back to something you said in terms of uh, the allowance. You don't want to, You're not talking about just giving them free money every week or month. You're actually, you know, they've got to work for it. They've got to, you know, pick the weeds or vacuum or whatever it is, right? They've got to work for the money. Yes, I really believe in that um, because it's the way the real world works. Mm -hmm. It's not that I live on the earth and I'm entitled to get money. Uh, you have to be a contributing member. So little kids can do little kid chores around the house. They can dust, they can vacuum, they can um, separate whites and color clothes. They can take the little um, garbage cans out. They can recycle, they can do little kid chores. As they get older, you're teaching them more of the life skills for a household and how they work. And what I do is I have the kids do a list of chores each work each week. And the deal that I have is now for the little ones, you're doing the work with them. The older ones are on automatic pilot. No work, no pay. And that's a pretty tough one. In fact, I was on years ago on Oprah with my seven-year-old son. And he was going down his job chart with Oprah. And it was great, Aaron, because I'm sitting there thinking, what have I done? I have my seven-year-old on Oprah and he's going down and he started out by saying, you know, we have five cats and I have to feed them every day, Oprah. And that was enough of an explanation for her audience, by the way. And he goes, because if I don't feed them, then they'll starve to death and they'll die. And mom hates dead cats around the house. And I was like, oh man. So I received 
2,300 letters from PETA members around the country saying, complaining about my dead cats. I don't have any dead cats in the house. Anyway, he was going through the rest of his chores and I was just sitting there going, I, I, I don't know where this is gonna go. And I have to water the plants and I have to sweep the, the walk. We're good. And then he says to Oprah, but Oprah, I'm seven years old. I get $7 a week allowance, but I have to do all my chores or I don't get paid. And Oprah interrupts the seven-year-old and starts, that's ridiculous. You should get some of your money if you do some of your chores. And she's yelling at this kid. And I'm thinking, how is he going to react? to this and he sits there puts his hand back on his hip and he thinks and he said but Oprah that doesn't make sense does it because don't you have to do your whole show to get paid your money you can't leave after the first commercial and get paid a little bit Oprah you know how it works in real life no work no pay and I was like yes so I let him move back into the house after the dead cat um reaction but the whole point you're teaching them life skills to live in the real world don't set up a system that's fake don't just give them money because that's not the way it works if you say to you know you're employed and you say to your employer you know what i'm only going to work 15 minutes today would you pay me for 15 minutes how long are you going to work there aaron so why would you set up a system that doesn't work that's great and yeah that's awesome i love that i love that story that story is classic <laughs> what did oprah say to that how did she oprah, answer that oprah came up and hugged him wow and i was like you know she was like weeping she hugged him and i was like oh thank you i have another do you have do you have time for another story sure. with him sure all right I start the allowance system when the kids are really young, when they're three years old, because that's when they start asking for things. So I was living in New York City and my son at that point was five years old. And I was a little liberal on the quick cash. Quick cash is instant gratification. They can take a third of their salary um, a week and spend it on the stuff that they wanted to do. So I was in a little grocery store with him. And the whole idea is, to, for them to budget and figure out. So he had to, uh, he was buying Tootsie Roll Pops. I know it's bad, but he was buying his Tootsie Roll Pops for the week and he's counting out, he had his quick cash and he's counting out how many Tootsie Roll Pops he could buy. I'm sitting there watching him, but not intervening. He stands online in front of him is a homeless woman who has a cup of change and one orange that cost 33 cents. She dumped the cup of change in the counter and the store owner counted it. She didn't have enough. And he said to her, put it back. You don't have enough change. So she was collecting her change. And he said, excuse me, excuse me. I would like to buy that orange for you, but I have to start over with my Tootsie Roll Pops and, and your orange and figure it out. And everyone's standing online listening to this little five-year-old explain this. And she goes, no, 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 no. And she was embarrassed and she's still collecting the change. He goes, no, 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 those are the rules. He goes, I work for a living. I get to choose how I spend my money, says this five-year-old. I choose to buy that for you because someday if I don't have food, there will be somebody to buy it for me. At which point, everyone, every woman in the market started weeping. Wow. And, and yeah. So anyway, he makes, he does the transaction. She let him buy it. He then bought his Tootsie Roll Pops, comes back to me. I'm weeping. I'm so proud of you. I can't believe you did that. And he goes, didn't you read your book? Those are the rules. This is how it works in life. You should be proud of me when I surprise you and do something I'm not supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. That's great. Five years old. That's amazing. 
Um, Neil, how can, for obviously people can get your, I strongly urge people to get your books because it sounds like it's fascinating. Your books are all on Amazon, I assume, correct? My books are on Amazon and the, the most recent one I wrote um, during COVID, number 28 book, wow. was Be Money Smart in Tough Times for Parents and Grandparents to be able to teach their kids for the little ones, the mediums and the teenagers going off and even the kids returning to the empty nest because mm -hmm. that's a phenomena that adult children are coming home. So tips and tools for everybody to, to deal with all those money issues. Okay, so all of you out there, please go to Amazon and, and, and buy some of these books because it's really, uh, it's fascinating. You're, this was interesting, I'll tell you that. If people want to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? They can go to my website. It's neilgodfrey.com. That's N-E-A-L-E-G-O-D-F-R-E-Y.com. And, you know, you can place a message in there and I'll get back to you. That's great. And we'll put those in, we'll put that also in the notes uh, of the show. So everybody will be able to see that. Uh, Neil, thanks so much for coming on. This was really, really good. Thank you. I, you know, love to come back and talk about lots more money topics. We'll do that for sure. You have been tuning in to the Aaron Katzman show where we speak to you about your life, your money and your investments. Be sure if you like this, and I don't know why you wouldn't have, be sure to hit the like button below. And also if you've not yet done so, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll speak to you soon.